Hey folks, Magro here. I'm doing a quick retest on the range video that I made between these two remotes here. This is the DJI FPV controller 2. This is the Tango 2 Pro Crossfire remote. And the reason why I'm doing the retest is because some of you pointed out in the comments of the prior video that even though I turned off the low power mode on the O3 air unit, that the air unit does not actually go into full power unless the quad is rearmed, or I guess the quad is armed. So I'm going to retest the range of these two with the quad armed and then see if that makes any difference. Make sure you watch the prior video first. I will link you in the video description. All right, let's get going. The garage door closing means that we've left and we are following the same path as the prior video. So right now those spinning red things means that the quad is armed and we are getting full power on our DJI O3 air unit. The active control link, so the control link that is controlling the quad is the Tango 2 Pro Crossfire. And we're seeing its statistics in the bottom left corner. So DBM is first, and then we've got link mode and then link quality. We're also seeing our DJI stuff in the right hand corner. We're seeing our megabits are coming down and down and down as we get further away from the quad. And at this point, we're down to one megabit, but we're still capturing some motion as shown by the propellers. But I'm guessing very soon, yep, okay, there we go. So we've now frozen up, which means bad things have happened. We have crashed, our quad has self-destructed and caught fire, which is not a good sign. So at this point, we have lost image. What I need to also do is I have to do one more test here with the DJI as the main control link. So this one here was the Tango 2. I need to do this once more, which I will do later on in the video. So at this point, we have turned around in exactly the same location and the patch antenna on the goggles 2 are shining. So you can see that very quickly we regain megabits and things start to look very, very good. So to summarize, I think you guys were 100% correct. By having the quad armed, I was able to go further and I will look up in Google Maps how much further I went and I will post it on the image here. But what I wanna do next is something that was requested in the prior video and that is leave the goggles in the garage and only take the DJI remote with me and see how that looks like. So this is what we're doing here. The, the goggles are in the garage. I've taken the remote and I just left the house. And as soon as I leave, I see RC link is lost. And I think what is happening here is that the remote controller is using a low power link to the goggles. And then the goggles, those are the ones which are really communicating with the quad. So you see, I still don't have RC link. It hasn't come back and I'm back home now, I'm almost back into the garage, and finally do I get RC Link back. Now here we're gonna do our second test, and this test here is using the DJI Controller 2 as our main link. So I've disconnected the crossfire, and everything you're seeing here is based off of the DJI Controller, and I'm now heading back out again. So we are gonna look very closely at the right-hand side to see what our megahertz does, we're gonna keep an eye on those props just to make sure that we know when the quad is armed and when it's not. So right now the quad is armed, so we should be getting full power on the O3 air unit. And we can see everything's looking good so far. I've got 50 megabits and things are looking pretty good. And what I suspect is going to happen is that as we lose the image, we're gonna also start to lose the remote link just based off of the test where we left the goggles in the garage and we walked away. I think the goggles are a big part of the new O3 system and that's where bad things happen. If the link in the goggles is not very strong to the quad, the whole thing just falls apart. So we're gonna see if I can prove that in this particular test. So as you can see, I'm walking away, megabits are, are dropping, HD signal is coming down, RC signal still shows four bars. So it continues to go down, continues to go down. So let's see what happens. And we can see RC link is still showing four bars, which just kind of proves how unreliable that particular indicator is. So we're down to nine megabits, so we should be getting to the end of the usable signal of the image. 
Okay, so for oh, Rx loss, so we're seeing this thing is about to fail safe and it fail safes. So I just turn around and now as I'm facing the quad, I've manually return, reactivated the recording. I'm trying to rearm the quad, it will not rearm. So again, it's showing how important the goggles and the image is to the whole system. Even the RC shows as four bars, I cannot rearm this guy. And once we see the image starts to clear up, only then will it rearm. So we're saying, okay, now we have one megabit. So now that I have decent um, image, I can rearm. Now what may be happening here is because it disarmed, it went into more of that low power mode and that's why I wasn't able to get the image to come back. And as soon as I, I rearmed it, we saw those megabits, all of a sudden they shot up. That could be why. So now I'm walking away again, again, RX loss and fail safe. So now I'm trying to get this guy to record again, trying to get it to rearm, getting a black screen. Okay, so now one megabit, I'm trying to rearm. Two megabits, come on, rearm. Three megabits, one megabit, zero, one, two. Hello, okay, and as soon as I rearm, we're up to eight and 20, yeah, 100%. What's happening is, when you don't arm it, it's not going into full power, and that's probably why it's not reconnecting. So we know that the remote controller too, if the goggle disconnects, the controller disconnects as well, and then reconnects a couple of seconds later. But because I think it's going to low power mode, it's not reconnecting automatically. So it definitely shows you that there is this weird thing happening between the goggles and uh, the remote controller and the air unit. And in this test, the range was nowhere near how far it was as the first test. And I'll post up here how far I actually got. And in this test, the range I got was very similar to the range as the prior video, where I actually did this particular test with the quad unarmed. So this is all very interesting, but still leaves me with a whole bunch of questions around how this thing actually works. So I hope that this video helps you get a bit more clarity in terms of what real life um, experience you can have with the O3 Air Unit, the Goggles 2, along with the FPV Controller 2. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.